Good morning, and welcome to another episode of Podcasting Your Purpose. I am Antoinette Blake, the DE Diva, aka the Delaware Blogger, and today's episode is entitled Podcasting and Storytelling. And I, you know, did the intro song, so let me know what you think about that as well. So remember as a kid, you loved, you may have loved listening to your parents or your grandparents, your babysitter, your caregiver, whomever it was, read you stories. And it's not like that was the story that you've never heard, but if they created an atmosphere or the way they read it made it memorable, that's what podcasting is because there are so many podcasts out there. It's the voice that you're listening to, how the story is being told. So we're going to talk about podcasting being a story, storytelling. And I'm going to give you a little few tips and hints and hacks on how to make your storytelling a little bit better. Remember, stories are just, you know, podcasts are just audio stories. They're telling um, your listeners about you or whatever it is that you're bringing forth. Think of it as radio's cousin. You know, this is now the cousin of radio. Radio reimagined with a plan and a purpose, but it's very, very intimate. It's one-on-one. Remember, when someone chooses to pull down your content and pop these earbuds into their ears, they are creating an intimate relationship with you. The largest sexual organ that a human has is between their ears and that is their brain. So it's one-on-one with you. They are listening to you. They're listening to your voice. And again, they're opting in. They're looking for you. They have chosen you. You didn't push yourself onto them. They have pulled down your podcast. They have downloaded your podcast. These files or these stories become their friends. And you know what? Audio doesn't care. It doesn't care your race, your religion, your ethnicity, It does not matter because your listeners are using their imagination to fill in the person. They're creating their own, you know, storyteller by just listening to your voice. And it does not matter what you look like, you know, if you have hair, if you're bald, if you're black, if you're white, if you're skinny, or you're fat. It does not matter because the listener is using their imagination to fill in all the other stuff. They become your co-creators of your story. Let their imagination run wild with the words, just listening to the words that's coming out of your mouth. Podcasting can be any genre. I mean, you can choose any topic, whether it's health and wellness, fitness, fashion. It could be history, true crime, law, education, comedy, um, news, politics, Facebook, Twitter. It, it does not matter. It could be social media. It could be podcasting. It could be blogging. There are so many different topics that you can choose. And don't ever feel like you won't have an audience for your topic or your niche. So once you've chosen your topic or your niche, you want to narrow it because you're going to think about who you want to attract who is going to be listening to your podcast. And then you're going to think about that and then you'll choose your content accordingly to your topic. Because people want to have, you know, they want to be involved. They want to plot. They want a beginning, a middle and an end. So choose your niche and then narrow your niche. What's going to motivate them to keep coming back? Remember, Apple has exceeded 1 million podcasts. Spotify, who owns Anchor FM, where I am, Delaware Blogger, 
they have exceeded 1 million episodes as well, podcasts as well. So you want to make sure that you contact, you know, you're connecting and, you know, you're, you're creating that relationship. Oh, and today's episode, keep calm and blog on guys. I'm still waiting for you to send me a, uh, a mug so I can share it here. Make sure that you send me an email at info at ablakeenterprises.com if you have a mug that you want me to feature here on YouTube. So let's continue our conversation about podcasting and storytelling. Depending on how you are setting up your podcast, is it going to be solo? Is it just going to be you? Or is it going to be interview style? Or are there going to be several hosts? So that's going to determine the way you set up yourself, set up your stories. Um, Because now, you know, podcasting has changed from mainstream media to niche media. We're going to niche it down and we're going after a specific group. Okay. So when you have that beginning, the middle and the end, think about that. Are you going to have introduction music? Remember, I'm trying to play around with the introductory music. What's your monologue? What's your description? What's your hook? Why are people going to stay there? What voice? Are you an educational, inspirational, comedic? What is your voice? That's your tone, your tenor. That's how you're going to tell your story using your podcast. Will you include sound effects? Do you have a soundboard? Are you going to add some sound effects into your storytelling, your pauses, and your timing? Will you take a break to have a cup of coffee? Will you speed up your story to get people interested? Oh my God, that's going to happen. What are we going to do? Your timing and your pause. Of course, good writing. Your content is king. Let your listeners wear the crown. And if you follow me on my blog, dellblogger.com, when I talk about content being king, as you want it to be so good that people will share it. So that's what I mean. Content is king. Let your listeners or your readers wear the crown. Make sure that it's so good that they want to share. Oh, yeah, girl, you got to go listen to this podcast. Yeah, my man, you better check out this podcast. So create your content so that people not only want to follow and listen to you, but they want to share it with their circle of family and friends as well. And have a tight you know, a schedule. If you're going to have a podcast for 23 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, including your sponsorship, including your, you know, sound effects, make sure you stick with that schedule. So people know that they can block out, you know, 30 minutes a day or 40 minutes a day. And it all depends. You know, I didn't think that I would sit and listen to a podcast for over an hour, especially one that had no commercials, but I did. I actually sat last night listening to a podcast. It was the interview of President Obama in 2015. And it was by a comedian. I can't remember his name. Mark uh, Marone, I think something like that. I just listened. I just popped my earbuds into my ears and I sat there and it was done in his garage. So I can only imagine those secret service and all the things that went into setting up this conversation with the president of the United States. And as I sat and listened, it was almost like I was a a fly on the wall in that in that garage. So again, that's what that podcasting is. It's that storytelling. It's that intimacy. It's that one-on-one. I'm using my imagination seeing, you know, Barack Obama, you know, talking to this guy and his interview questions. So it was good. So yeah, make sure the length, uh, people know that if this is going to be an hour long, let them know if it's going to be, you know, a normal commute, which used to be about 28 to 30 minutes, make sure that they know that so that they, when they're blocking out their time, they know that they're going to dedicate it, you know, that block of time to you again. Now, how are you going to get your audience involved? You have to know them. What do they want? What is, what are their pain points? What are you there for? You there again, to entertain them, to inspire them, to educate them, or just simply, you know, make them laugh or cry or whatever. So, you know, 
what you need to do in order to get that emotion that you're looking for from your audience. And again, make sure you do you, boo-boo. You can't do me. I can't do you. We cannot com compete with others. So once we've narrowed that niche, we know what they want. We know what they, they that they're coming to us for. We're going to give it to them. Then you think about your hardware and your software. Are you going to use a microphone? Are you just going to use your smartphone? Are you going to use a Yeti mic, an arm, you know, a mic, a lavalier mic, headphones? What are you going to do? Are you going to use Zoom? Are you going to use YouTube? What are you going to use? You're going to get a table, you know, to sit there with uh, your guests, or are you going to be in that closet or that small bathroom or even in the fort? Remember? Take those two chairs and put a comforter over top of it and get up underneath there so that it is quiet and you've got, you know, those barriers there you're absorbing the echo sounds. So think about that as well. And let me give you just a few audio pitfalls to avoid. And I'm going to read these to you. Audio, avoid these audio pitfalls. Do not give numbers and facts and data, you know, because people are listening to you with earbuds and their brain is like, ah. They don't really process things. If they can see the data, charts and graphs, that, that's a visual thing. That's not auditory. Don't you know bring out facts and stats and data like that that's going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about because they're not going to be able to process it because you're thinking with your ears, not with your eyes. People are listening to you. They're not watching. They're not reading. They're not calculating. So think with your ears. Add texture and pace. Are you going to talk really, really, really fast or are you going to slow it down, be intimate, pause, ask questions, be mellow, put some songs on, some music? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to put morning music in. Hey. See the timing? How are you going to slow it down? Are you going to have the music in the background? Or are you going to be a speedy Gonzalez and just speed through everything that you have to say? Only you know. Do you, boo-boo. Right? Now, if you're going to have guests, here's some suggestions I have for you. Make sure they're good guests, somebody that's a good talker, someone that's going to answer your questions. You know, we do have a lot of people that are introverts and quiet and they're not really, you know, good to interview because you're going to be trying to pull out information and they're going to give you answers to one or two you know, words to their answer. So, you know, know who you're going to interview, you know, talk with them first. Um, when you are and you found a good guest, listen to them. Once you've given, what I used to do is I send a Q&A script so that it would help with the flow of the show. So I would give them everything from beginning to end, how I opened the show, when I was going to take a break, the questions. So that way you're not over talking each other. Um, you're not, you know, they know what question is going to be next. They know they're going to go to a break. They kind of can you know, get their stuff together so that they can answer your questions. And again, the flow of the show is good. So get that to them. Um, Pre-plan, again, if you have time, you're going to you do a Zoom, talk with them a little bit, get them comfortable. I always, you know, I, I always love doing interview style podcasts and my guests were always like, wow, this was fun. I didn't realize, you know, an hour had gone by because I tried to make it fun. When my uh, interviewees would answer a question, I would listen. I would really, really listen. And even on the script, I said, we're going to do some ad living. So if they said something that was profound or funny or something that, you know, touched me or touched, I knew would touch my listening audience, we would expound on that. We'd talk a little bit more about that. So again, make sure that when you are interviewing someone that they have time to answer the question and then you have time to listen. Hi Althea, how are you? Good morning. Do you have your coffee? Today we are talking about podcasting and storytelling. And it's so very important. I'm going to say good morning. Um because you want to make sure that your guests are comfortable, that the flow of the show is going well. And again, research your interviewee. Um, find out who they are, because oftentimes people want to be guests on your show because they have something to promote or to sell, but it may not be a good fit for your audience, it may not be part of your niche, and you have to be able to say no. Now, another good thing is if you are part of a 
uh, podcasting community, you can always suggest that you will give that information to another podcast host. So again, don't feel like you've got to accept every offer that you get because there are so many other podcast shows out there that may be a better fit for the guests. And actually all they really want to do is have a way to build onto their brand and they're using your platform in which to do so. So again, if it's not a good fit for your niche, don't just fit it in unless of course it is president Obama and he wants to come on your show and it doesn't matter what you're talking about, comedy, dramedy or whatever. He's a good fit, right? That's what Mark did his great one. Okay. Um, and again, don't, force the conversation. Once you are interviewing your guest, and if you're finding that he or she is just a one answer, they don't want to, you know, really expound on anything. Don't push them. Don't pressure them. Your show may just be a little bit shorter than you expect it. And always, always, always ask good questions because that is the whole purpose of the podcast, the storytelling. You know, you can get those generic questions, you know, those generic answers, but make it fun, make it interesting because that, that's why people are coming to see, I mean, coming to hear your show and your guests. And if you're a solo and you don't have interviewees like me, and now that's my format, have fun, be authentic, be passionate, be sincere. Because again, this whole thing about podcasting and storytelling, it is not the words, but how they are spoken audio. People pop in these earbuds. They're listening to you. They're having that intimate one-on-one -on -one conversation. So keep your eyes open and your mic on and you will be successful. So again, if you guys are interested in my podcasting, your purpose workbook, which is the 40 two page workbook. Remember, oh, I turned it this way. The 42 page workbook, it is still available. I have five copies remaining. These are $15.99. You can send me an email, info at ablakeenterprises.com for a copy. Otherwise, you can go right to amazon.com to get your copy. And my basic blogging tips for beginners is available as a book bundle. Again, together, this is $15.99 by itself. $9.99 by itself, but together is the book bundle for $26. Head over to dellblogger.com to purchase the book bundle. I have only five left. Otherwise, you'll have to go to Amazon and get it or go to Book Patch to order it by heading over to dellblogger.com. Again, this is a great book for you to have. It's a blueprint that's going to help you get started. There's a lot of great topics in there and as well as the schedule. So again, if you want to get started, if you're interested in learning more about podcasting, send an email to info at ablakeenterprises.com. We'll get you started with the 30-minute complimentary discovery call to see where you are, what you want to do. And then we can increase that for the 60-minute um, mini coaching session for $77 or the 90-minute mini coaching session for $97. It's a great investment for you. And today at one o'clock, that's right, today at one o'clock, blog your way to a business profit with Elite Conversations, Life Talk Radio, and Podcast. At one o'clock, today's episode is why you should build your business with a blog because it's better than just with a website. So that's one o'clock today. That is the URL, do the tiny URL, um, dot com forward slash blog, the number two, profit. You can find me on my Anchor FM, Dell Blogger, and I actually did a uh, episode yesterday. I usually only do that on Saturdays, but I put in an extra one yesterday. And you can find me, again, on all my social media platforms. That's my link tree ID, Dell Blogger, so you can find me. So just use the hashtag Delaware Blogger. I will show up everywhere. So until the next time, stay smart, stay safe, and stay social from a distance because I will see you in cyberspace. See ya. It's the DE Diva, a.k.a. the Delaware Blogger. And don't forget the mugs. Send the mugs out, right? I'm going to take you out. Have a beautifully blessed Wednesday wherever you are. Don't forget, podcasting is a wonderful, powerful medium, and you can do it too. 
Bye-bye.